Hello guys, in this video, we'll learn how data can be registered on the PLC memory. First, I'll have a short introduction to data register, and its different types. Then we'll see some examples of using increment, decrement, and move instructions. Finally, comparison instructions will be told. Note that, during this video, we'll see how special memories can be used to do initial settings and have a flickering output. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content. I will be posting through the channel. Well, let's start this video. First, let me open the help window to see my PLC addresses range. Before, I explain some bit contacts. These addresses use one bit to store only two numbers, one or zero. These can be used to represent a digital input is activated or not, a digital output must be turned on or not, or a timer or counter has reached its predefined value or not. To save and use other parameters, like temperature, pressure, and level, PLC needs to use more bits. Usually, my PLC uses 16 or 32 bits to save numbers, like these 16 bits, and 32 bits counters. To save numbers on the Delta PLC memory, I can use data register addresses, which start with the letter D. Such as bit contacts memory, it has three main categories, original, latched, and special which were explained before. Now, I want to change these memory values and show you their difference. So, I'm going to use increment and decrement instructions to change these memories. Now, let's compile, and download the program. Okay, let me run my PLC. As you see, based on my program, I can use the first push button to increase stored numbers on D0 and D408. Similarly, I can use the second push button to decrease them. Now, let me stop my PLC. As you see, this address, D0, has lost its last value. Now, let's disconnect the power supply of my PLC and then repower it again. Well, this memory has kept its last value, because it's a latched memory. So, latched memories can be used to keep important parameters. Now, let's see a simple usage of special memories. Note that, on the help window, here, we can find a short description about each special memory. For example this address has stored the number pi. 
it is defined as the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Similarly, we can find the description of each special bit contact. Well, these bit addresses change based on the PLC state. Let me use this one, M1000, N2. It is on during the first scan cycle when PLC starts to run, and remains off afterward. So it can be used for all kinds of initial settings. I want to use that, to store two constant numbers on these memories, at the first scan cycle of my PLC. First, let me use a normally open contact with the M1000 N2 address. Well, I can use move instruction to store a value on a specific memory address. For this instruction, I must determine a source address or constant number as its input, and an output address as its destination address. Now, let me use another move instruction, at this time I enter the source value and the destination address directly. Alright, I have downloaded my program, let's go to the online mode. Pay attention to these values. Now, let's run my PLC. As you see, these values have been changed. Now, my computer display them in hexadecimal format. Let's go the view menu and select another choice for this item, monitoring data format. Let me select the automatically choice. Note that, these values have not changed. I only select another way to display numbers. Well, these numbers have been moved during the first scan cycle, because of this special bit contact. Now, I can change them with these push buttons, like the previous test. Alright, in this program, I've used MOV instruction. It can be used to move a number from minus 32768 to 32767, which can be stored with 16 bits. Now, let's look at the memory structure of my PLC. Well, memory addresses start with the letter D and a number starting from 0, and each address includes 16 bits. So, when I use the move instruction to save a number like 5 on D0, PLC will use these 16 bits to save number 5 in its binary form. Note that, the last bit determines the number sign. 0 for positive, and 1 for negative numbers. To move a larger number, D move instruction can be used. Note that, this instruction uses 32 bits, to store a number. This is the binary form of 66,000 with 32 bits. So, to store the desired number in 32 bits, when I write an address here, PLC automatically will use the next address too. Note that, at this time, this bit determines the number sign. Now, let's see how this instruction, DMOVR, can be used to store a fractional or real number. Like the previous instruction, PLC uses 32 bits to store a real number, but it will use the standard to save different parts of a real number. 1 bit for sign, 8 bits for the exponent part, and 23 bits for the fraction part. Therefore, these bits represent the number 5.5, .5 on my PLC memory. As you have seen, the memory structure does not change, but it can be used in different ways, based on different standards and bit numbers, which depends on the used instruction inside the PLC program. Now, let's test move instruction. Like the previous program, based on this special memory, this number has been transferred to this address, during the first scan cycle. Now, let me change the monitoring data format to hexadecimal. OK, this is the hexadecimal format of the number 66000. Also, in the next network, you can see D0, and D1 values in hexadecimal. As you see, PLC has used both D0 and D1, to store this number. Alright, now, let's see what are these instructions, which can be used to compare numbers, 
or check some logical conditions. Let's test the first instructions. Well, let me compile and download the program, and click here, to run my PLC. If you remember, we used these items to change bit memories like M0. Similarly, this item can be used to change stored numbers on PLC memory. This instruction works based on 16 bits. So, this item is selected to change its first input. And here we can see valid ranges in decimal, hexadecimal, and binary forms. Now, let me enter number 15 in its binary form. Here, we can see the hexadecimal form of the entered number. For now, this output is off. Why? Because this instruction perform and logic between each bit. Now, the final result is zero. So PLC turn off this output. To have a non-zero result, according to the first input, at least, one of these bits must be one. For example, if the first or second bits are one, the result will be non-zero. Let's test it. Now, let me change the second input. The important part is the four last bits. Well, at this time, PLC has turned on this output. Now, let me enter a non-zero number, that its last bits are zero. Again, the final result is zero. So, PLC will turn off the output. Alright, let's exit from the online mode. Well, the first instruction has been told. These two instructions work similarly, but based on OR, and X or logic. The next three instructions are similar to the first three instructions, but they use double words, 32 bits. The next instruction is simple. Try to test it. It can be used to invert the program logic. After that, we have different types of comparison instructions. The first group compares two numbers, that can be stored or represented by 16 bits. The next group, instructions that start with the letter D, also compare two numbers, but numbers that use 32 bits. Now, let's write a simple program. In the first network, I've used a 32 bits counter. So, to compare its value with another number, I must use a comparison instruction, that started with the letter D. I want to use greater than instruction, to compare the counter value with number 5. Well, based on the program, when the counter value is greater than number 5, PLC will turn on the first output. That's simple. Now, let me introduce a special bit contact, which can help us to have a flickering light. I want to use internal clock memory. Well, when PLC is powered, these four memories will start automatically to produce four different pulses. I want to use M1013 address. Its frequency is 1 Hz. Let me download the program.
OK, let me use the first push button to increase the counter value. As you can see, if the counter value reaches number 6, which is greater than 5, the output will start flickering, because of this special bit memory. For example, a simple usage of this bit is when we need red or yellow flickering traffic lights. Okay, let's continue. These instructions can be used to check a certain bit of an address. L let me use the first one to explain them. Well, this instruction has two inputs. The first one determines an address like D0. As you know, this address uses 16 bits. So, the next input can be a number from 0 to 15. For example, let me select the third bit. Now, based on this part of my program, when the third bit of D0 is changed to 1, PLC will turn on the output. You can test it easily, so let me skip it. Note that, other comparison instructions work similarly. Comparison instructions starting with the letter F, can be used to compare real numbers such as 2.5 or 3.65. Finally, there are some comparison instructions starting with the letter Z, or DZ. These instructions have three inputs. For these instructions, first, the second input is subtracted from the first input. Then the absolute value of the difference gotten is compared with the absolute value of the third input. Alright, in the next video, I'll explain basic math instructions, and then, I'll do a practical project to control a water tank, using factory I.O. software. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.